Well, today we're going to have a special message about our song. It comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, and it's entitled, What Happened to Your Song? Have you ever lo lost your song? Have you ever lost your ability to sing? Or maybe you really never had it in the first place. But really, have you lost your enthusiasm for living? Which is something very similar. Have you lost your joy for living? And as we all know, life doesn't always deal us a good hand, does it? In fact, there are many times when it's sometimes downright bad. Still, we have to learn how to sing. We can sing because we have life. And as the song says, I sing because I am happy. Now let's go to God's Word, the book of Acts, chapter 16. And it says, Around about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. They were being put in jail because of their faith. So think about it. Paul and Silas were thrown into jail because they had faith in Jesus Christ, and they were in a dark, dirty, dungeon-like jail, unlike some of the jails we have nowadays, but they were singing. They hadn't lost their song like many of us do when life hits us a blow that we don't like. But God wants us to sing. You see, God wants us to experience life to the fullest. If we look at his word in the book of John chapter 10, Verse 10, it says, A thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, but my purpose is to give them, meaning us, a rich and satisfying life. That's what God wants for us, his children. He, he's telling us that others may try to destroy us, but he wants us to have a great life. So what should we do in return? Well, let's look and see what the psalmist says in Psalm 9 and 2. It says, I will be filled with what? With joy because of you, meaning because of God Almighty. He said, I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. So no doubt about it, God wants us to sing. He wants us to experience greater joy and fullness in life. So today I just kind of stopped by after New Year's to tell you some of the things that cause us, amen, to lose our song and how we can get our song back because there are song stealers in life and there are song producers. Let's talk about the stealers first. Who are those thieves that steal our song? Well, number one is complaining. Complaining. We need to stop complaining. Philippians 2 and 14 says, Do everything without what? Without complaining and arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. God doesn't want his children to be like the wicked world around us. He wants us to do everything without complaining or arguing. And the only way I know how to shine like a star in this world is by not being a chronic complainer. Complaining doesn't draw people to Christ, does it? It actually pushes them away. If you're trying to get them to come to church or, or find out if Jesus could be their Lord and Savior, but you're a person who complains all the time, they're going to say, why do we want to do something like that? They don't seem like they're happy. They complain about everything. They do little good in this world, chronic complainers. See, God never meant for us to be a bunch of chronic complainers and gripers. He didn't send his son to suffer, right, and be crucified just so we could complain all our lives. He suffered and was crucified so that we could have life and have life abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. And folks that gripe and complain all the time are song stealers. They steal the joy right out of people. Nobody wants to be around a complainer all the time. You're not going to feel happy yourself. They steal the song out of themselves and they steal it out of people that they come in contact with. I remember a, a story about a preacher who was riding on a plane, and there was an elderly couple sitting next to him in the seats. There was three seats across. And they were talking louder than they probably realized, and the wife was complaining. She says, 
I don't like riding on these airplanes. She says, folks get on them with guns, knives. They take you places that you don't want to go and it may even crash. And, and the woman's husband was real frail and he said, now honey, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. The, the plane was riding very smooth and, and, and when the woman's husband said optimistically, you see honey, we made it all right. The plane landed nice and smooth. Everything was fine. They haven't got out of the plane yet, but it was, it was a great flight, no problems. And the wife says, we ain't there yet. Still complaining, even though the flight was perfect. Are we like that woman? That we can't see anything but negative in most situations in our life? Is that us? Then, then we're thieves, aren't we? We're stealing the song out of people's lives. It's been said that all of God's creatures lug around some kind of atmosphere wherever they go. Think about that, right? Like the little black and white bundle of fuzz called a skunk, right? He carries around an atmosphere when he goes around, doesn't he? It's, it kind of makes his atmosphere and ours kind of smelly, doesn't it, when the skunk comes around. And that's what song stealers are like. They're just like skunks. They're full of changing the atmosphere around them to make it not so great place to be. It's also said that some people brighten up a room just by leaving it. I'm sure you've heard that expression before. Someone said that if you want to stay positive in life and on top of things, then you must stay away from psychotics and neurotics. So what's the difference between a psychotic and neurotic? Well, a psychotic believes that 2 plus 2 equals 5. The neurotic believes 2 plus 2 equals 4, but then he worries about his answer. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have to stay away from some people because they'll steal our song. If you keep on hanging around a song sealer long enough, he's going to take your song and leave. Remember that old saying, Jody's got your girl and gone? That's what's going to happen if you stay around a complainer. They're going to steal your song and then they're going to be gone. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, bad company corrupts good character. In other words, don't hang around bad people. They'll corrupt your character. Proverbs 13 and 20 says, walk with who? With the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Isn't that the truth? I'm sure we've all found that out through our life, haven't we? Chronic complainers that are song stealers. Who else is a song stealer? person with a negative attitude, right? A person with a negative attitude is similar to a complainer, really. There's not too much difference between the two. If we go back to the Bible and uh, remember that story where there was saints who went out and scouted out the promised land before they were to move into it and they wanted to know if it was safe to go in there. And we picked that story up in the Bible in Numbers chapter 13. He said, Let's go at once and take the land. We can certainly conquer it. There's no problem. We got enough people here and so forth. But 31 says, the other men who had explored the land disagreed. They said, we can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So they had a negative attitude. The, the people that were there said, no, we can do this. But a few people who looked said, oh, no, they look like they're stronger than us. The majority of those men were negative thinkers. Whether they realized it or not, they were stealing the joy of the others who wanted to go where God had told them to go to the promised land. And I always like to tell a story to illustrate this of a, a young high school student who came home with his second semester report card and he had an A average, which is really great, isn't it? In every subject for the whole first half of the school year. He was real excited and happy as he showed his report card to his parents. His father looked at him and said, good job, son. Well done. That's great. His mom looked at him and said, I don't know why you're so happy. You still have another half a year to go. See, that's a person with a negative attitude. It was a great thing that the kid had done, but she looked at it negatively. That's the difference between these two people. It's called attitude, your attitude. One sees nothing but bad stuff. The father saw everything good. And those who always see bad stuff, the negative in a situation, spread a bad report to others, they are really song stealers too. 
Those who darken the world of others really darken their own world because they can't be happy either if they're always feeling like that. Proverbs 11 and 17 says, Your kindness will do what? Reward you. But your cruelty will destroy you. We need to listen to what God's trying to tell us. And, and really, that's a handbook of life, isn't it? If we follow the things that the Bible tells us, we'd have a much better life. If we go around spreading bad reports about everything and everyone, we'll no, do no good for Christ and we'll steal the joy right out of other people's lives, including our own. There are many things that steal our song in life, but we need to zero in on how to get the song back, right? How to get it back. What is it that those with a song in their heart have? What's the secret? Well, let's look at what a song producer is. He takes action, doesn't he? He has, number one, positive thinking. He say, today is going to be a great day, just like I mentioned earlier. This is a new year. We need to think, this is going to be a great year. If we start off saying this is going to be another lousy year, guess what? We're going to have another lousy year. It's our attitude. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but in his heart he's not with you. We are what we think. If we think positive thoughts, we will be positive living people. If we think negative, right, that's the kind of life we're going to have, a negative life. If we make up our minds to sing, we're going to sing. Abraham Lincoln once said, most people are about as happy as they choose to be. Isn't that the truth? Most people are about as happy as they choose to be. Whenever someone comes up to you and says, this isn't my day, just look them straight in the eye and say, well, whose day is it then? <laughs> Essentially, we all choose what kind of day we're going to have, don't we, as soon as we wake up in the morning. And we all choose what kind of life we're going to have because of our attitude. I want to just demonstrate this with the story of a 92-year-old, very petite, but well-poised and proud lady who was fully dressed each morning by 8 o'clock. Fully dressed. Her hair was all done, makeup perfectly applied, and she was legally blind. And we join her as she is getting ready to move into an assisted living facility, maybe much like this one. She smiles sweetly when told her room is ready. As she maneuvers her walker to the elevator, she visualizes, because she is blind, how her tiny room is going to look. I love it, she says, with the enthusiasm like an eight-year-old child. I love it. And the aide who was with her said, Mrs. Jones, you, you haven't even seen your room yet. She says, that doesn't have anything to do with it. She said to him, happiness is something you decide on ahead of time. Whether I like my room or not doesn't depend on how the furniture is arranged. It's how I arrange my mind. I already decided to love it. She said, it's a decision I make every morning when I wake up. I have a choice. I can spend the day in bed recounting the difficulty I have with the parts of my body that no longer work, or get out of bed and be thankful for the ones that do. She said, each day is a gift. And as long as my eyes are open, I focus on the new day and all the happy memories, amen, I've stored away just for this time in my life. You see, this woman stored up all those happy memories, right? Sometimes we store up all the bad memories and we forget about all the good things that happen to us in life. Our memory is like a bank account. You withdraw what you put in. If you put in nothing but sad times, that's the only thing you won't get out of it, right? But if you deposit some good memories into your mind, when you time to withdraw some to remember them and be happy about it, you'll get happy memories. This woman had the right mindset for her situation in life. She made up her mind that she was going to be happy and content and be thankful for what she had. And the same thing applies to our song, so to speak. 
If you want to sing bad enough, we will. If you want to find joy in life, we will. You see, if we want to put the song back in our hearts, we have to have a positive attitude. What's another way to get your song back? Listen to others who sing. And not necessarily songs we're talking about. We're talking about others who have good attitudes. Just like we all like to listen to a special singer, right, who changes our mood and, and our outlook. And after listening for a while, we sometimes start singing a song ourselves, don't we? And when we're listening to a gospel singer, we get spiritual inspiration. The kind that makes us want to sing praises unto the Lord. So if we're going to sing or get our songs back, we got to hang around people who sing. People who live an abundant life, a happy life, and learn how to sing that song of joy that they're singing. We have to listen to what they're saying and what they're singing in life. We have to pay attention to their every move, and if we hang around croakers, we'll never get our song back. Proverbs 13 and 20. Guys, again, walk with the wise, become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. You see, a joyous spirit is uplifting, it's contagious, it's encouraging, it's helpful, and it's also loving. If we want to get our song back, we've got to walk with the wise, just like the Bible says, and hang out with other singers. Let's say we went to Baskin Robbins. Everybody likes ice cream, I hope, right? And they have those 31 delicious flavors, and you look on the menu, peanut butter, chocolate, Rocky Road, chocolate fudge, Keep on going, right? Considering all those delicious flavors, can you imagine anyone coming in, looking at all those flavors and says, uh, yeah, just give me plain vanilla. And when you could get one of those exciting flavors, right? It's the same in life, isn't it? Life is full of fascination and excitement, but most of us settle for that plain vanilla kind of life. Give me a dip of bland, or a dip of mediocre, or a boring scoop of blah. No, that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to take them 31 flavors and enjoy them. John 10 and 10 says, The thief's purpose is to steal and destroy. My purpose is to give them, meaning us, a rich and satisfying life. Have you lost your song today? Are we just sitting around with our head down and we're feeling sorry for ourselves? Maybe we're carrying too much baggage that they won't even let us on the plane and there's nothing in our hands. You know what I'm talking about? Do you find yourself walking into a room and other people start leaving? You call your best friend, you start telling them your troubles and they say, oh, I got another call, I got to go. We lost our song if that's what we're talking about. We lost our joy. It's time to put on a new one. Open up the blinds. Get out of the house and get into the sunshine. I'm not talking about the S-U-N sun. I'm talking about the S-O-N sun, Jesus Christ. Put on Jesus Christ. If you want your song back, he's the person that can put it back for you. Stop living that old, plain, vanilla life. It's time to turn your spiritual radio on to WWJD. What would Jesus do? <clears throat> the Lord has a song for our ears. He has a melody for our soul. He has a beat for our heart. And he's got a step for your dance. You can't just tune him in on any old radio. You have to have a spiritual radio. Amen. He's offering you a chance like they say on television, for a limited time only, right? All you got to do is come up and ask him for salvation. It's a free offer because his son already paid the price on Calvary's cross. And as they say on TV, but wait, there's more. He said, if you act right now, I'm going to include the Holy Spirit and God the Father. That's Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father, all for free. All you have to do is say, Lord... Please forgive me of my sins. Come into my life as Lord and Savior. That's all he asks of us. A friend of mine once told me, everybody's got eternal life. You're either going to spend it down there in eternal damnation and torture, or you're going to spend it in eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven. And the choice is yours because God gives us the choice. He doesn't force us to do anything. Let's pray.
Time to free our hearts from hatred, free our mind from worries, and give them all to God. Give more and expect less. Set our mind on heavenly things and be thankful for what you have. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're going to help us get our song back in 20, 2016. Help us to protect ourselves from those song stealers who want to take our happiness and abundant life that you want to give us away from us. Help us to hang around the song producers, others who feel happy about their life and thankful for what they have. Help us not to be complainers. Lord, we know that your son Jesus didn't die on Calvary's cross that we could be complainers all our life. He died so that we could have a happy and abundant life. Help us to change our attitude and our way of thinking. And help those who don't know you as Lord and Savior to come and ask you for forgiveness so that they too can enjoy all the happiness that you have provided for each and every one of your children. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.